This week on Moving Markets, the US Treasury Department has flagged Malaysia for potential currency manipulation. Netflix's growth seems to have stalled, but is this temporary or has the streaming giant passed its peak? And finally, the European Super League saw a quick rise and fall, and so did the stocks of the teams involved. The United States Treasury Department has placed Malaysia on a watch list for potential currency manipulation. Countries are placed on this list if the U.S. Treasury deems that it unfairly intervenes in the foreign exchange market in order to artificially lower the value of their currencies. This would make their exports cheaper, putting America's own exports at a disadvantage. Ten other countries joined Malaysia on the watch list this year, including China, Japan, South Korea, and Germany. But unfair cheap exports may not be the only reason. It's worth noting that the US did not actually name Switzerland, Taiwan, and Vietnam currency manipulators, despite the fact that these countries fall within the criteria. A sign that the Biden administration may be taking a less confrontational approach to international currency policy. Regardless, it seems that the label has lost its potency in recent years and become more of a symbolic move. In fact, there was hardly any ringgit movement against the US dollar on the back of this news. Pandemic-related stay-home orders helped Netflix deliver record growth in 2020, but now the streaming giant may have hit its peak. Investors were disappointed by the company's earnings as subscriber growth missed expectations. Netflix attributes the slump to a lack of big new releases, since many production schedules were interrupted last year because of COVID-19. But that's not all. The disruptor turned incumbent of the media industry now also faces intensifying competition from the likes of Disney, Apple, and HBO, just to name a few. Analysts are divided as to whether Netflix's stalling growth is merely temporary or a permanent trend. However, international markets may still represent a catalyst for growth because of limited competition. Meanwhile, company executives did also hint at consumer products and video games as potential new revenue streams in the future. Shares of Netflix fell about 10% following the announcement, though it has since recovered somewhat. Football fans around the world were shocked by the news of a short-lived European Super League, featuring some of the continent's most elite clubs, some of which, like Juventus and Manchester United, are actually listed companies. Now, the Super League is all but dead, as teams have pulled out one by one after persistent backlash from fans. But had the breakaway league survived, its founding teams would have been able to each take home an estimated $400 million, over four times what the winner of the Champions League received last year. They would have achieved this by effectively stripping the Champions League of its most lucrative clubs and giving them permanent membership in an exclusive separate league. Unlike the millions of football supporters, though, markets reacted positively. Juventus's shares shot up 18%, while Manchester United surged 11% in reaction to the news. Even shares of Borussia Dortmund and Ajax climbed higher, despite the fact that they were not among the founding clubs. However, these stock market gains have since been erased as top names have withdrawn from the league. Although with so much money at stake, from television rights to merchandising, it's likely only a matter of time before the team's owners take another shot at it. And that's what's been Moving Markets. Like and follow us at BFM Radio to catch us every Friday for top business and finance news.